What is up, you guys? Welcome back. It's your host, Galadon. Or, of course, if it's your first time here, thank you guys so much for stopping by. We continue my eternal quest for the meaning of life. I mean, for a deck that works for me, uh, which is probably just about as difficult. And what I have been doing is going and looking at the top of the leaderboards and taking those decks, copying them, trying them out, taking players in my clan who are posting 10, 11, 12 win battles in grand challenges, trying those out. It hasn't really worked out that well for me, so I just sat down and I put together a deck. I went through one card after the other and thought of the things that I face the most, uh, like Lava Hounds, like uh, Hog Riders, and of course like Elite Barbarians and Golems. And so I wanted a little bit of something, a little bit of everything to try to defend, and I brought my win condition card, the Miner, and I gotta tell you, in putting this deck together, uh, you know, I'd call it a Gala deck or whatever, but honestly, I won't be staying with it that long. I feel like these decks are like Clash of Clans bases. They work for a couple of days, and then you really have to move on and try something else. Uh, although there are some players out there that have played the same basic deck for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. For me, I, I like to change things up. And this deck helped me discover what I truly believe is the most underappreciated, underrated card in Clash Royale, the Tornado. I love the Tornado. I feel like it is definitely underrated. I think that this card is absolutely fantastic. It works in so many situations. It counters literally every offensive card, at least in some way, shape, or form. Obviously, it's not going to be a hard counter against most cards, uh, but it is going to buy you that extra time that you need to squeeze something else in, to get something else ready, to generate just a couple more elixir to finish that troop off, or even to pull it off to a different tower or into a defense. So I am just, I'm loving the hurricane. If the hurricane were a girl, I'd ask her out. Don't don't tell Galloway that. If the hurricane were a guy, I'd be like, yeah, that guy is, is okay. Uh, but you know what I'm trying to say? I mean, the hurricane is amazing. I love the hurricane. I admire the hurricane and I just, I would love to be able to figure out a way to get it into every single one of my decks. Obviously, it doesn't always work out, but it seems like more often than not, there's going to be an opportunity during a battle where you can throw in the hurricane and it's just going to be better than a fireball, better than a log, uh, better than anything like that because it's going to keep that card or cards away from your tower and damage or completely take out the smaller cards, especially when you're facing a lot of skeletons, fire spirits, uh, goblins, things like that. It's not going to completely take out the smaller units like minions necessarily, but it's going to damage them enough that they can be easily finished off with some other splash damage or by the tower or even by a zap spell. Uh, so I would like to ideally keep the tornado in my deck at all times, but I have promised myself also, and it's coming in a future episode, you guys, to learn the Stinking Lava Hound. I, I need to make that guy work. Check out the Tornado value right here. All those units getting pulled back. And here's another key to the Tornado that I haven't mentioned before. It centers everything. It focuses all of those units. It brings them together in one tight group, ideal for getting smashed by a fireball, or like you guys saw right there, getting just splash damaged by a couple of fire spirits doing just exponential amounts of damage because they're all on top of each other. There you see the archers again, not taken out completely, but damaged badly enough that they're easily countered. Now in comes the log as well. A great counterpart to the tornado is the log doing that partial damage to a lot of different units. Check it out on the hog rider. Seems like it stalls for so long. The hog is never going to get to a tower. It can't even finish off the furnace. Well, almost, but you saw. Again, the log one more time, and then if the hurricane is combined with the log, you're gonna take out all sorts of ground units like archers. Another hog rider and fire spirit. Check out all the fire spirits moving in on me here. And of course, I just need to get around to my log one more time. Check it out, double digits on both towers. Just somehow, the ice wizard keeps me from losing the tower. The log gets the job done. And through masterful professional play, okay, through a bit of luck, I managed to win that challenge against a Nova player. But let's move on, let's try this deck again. Now, of course, I realize it has a couple of legendary cards in it, the Ice Wizard and the Miner. Uh, my free-to-play count, still completely absent of any legendary cards. 
Supercell, are you listening? For once. Uh, but I realize also that by now, by this point in the game, even a lot of the free-to-play players have multiple legendaries. Trust me, I see all of your guys' tweets. I, I do read them, by the way. I don't get a chance to reply to all of them, but I see all of your guys' tweets, most of them just rubbing in the fact that you have multiple legendaries on your free-to-play account, and I still don't have a single one. Conspiracy could be... Anyway, okay, back to the battling. So what we're talking about here is this deck. Now, I am going to make a, a couple of the hashtag my fun deck videos. I asked you guys to give me your fun decks, fun decks that you guys enjoy playing. Now, preferably not necessarily just focused on winning, uh, not a deck that loses all the time either, something that's fun to play that's going to have some fun wins. Uh, we're going to start out with the hashtag my fun deck episode without any legendary cards. We're going to try it on my free to play account first, then we'll try out some future episodes with the legendary cards. Uh, if I do use your deck, it is going to mean a gift card for you, a US iTunes or Google Play gift card. I will reach out to you on Twitter. Uh, use the hashtag MyFunDeck. And winners will be announced every week, along with Galadon opened my chest and made my own legendary. I'm still working on that video. I promise you guys we're going to get there to some other new card concepts. Now back to this battle that's almost down to double elixir. And check it out. That left tower of my opponent just getting chipped away bit by bit by bit. Mostly by the Fire Spirits, doing a great job. The Ice Wizard, I love the versatility of the Ice Wizard. It's probably my favorite legendary card when it comes to offense and defense. It's really between the Ice Wizard and the Princess. Both of them do such a great job. Now this deck set up to stop the Lava Hound. There is my Inferno Tower. Now I normally just get annihilated by the Lava Hound, but there goes one more time. The Tornado, maybe not the greatest to use the Tornado to pull a unit away from your Inferno Tower. It's like uh, you're doing the zap for him. You're resetting that Inferno Tower, pulling it away. Here he's got a lot of units converging on me, and it doesn't look good because he's got that second Lava Hound. But check out the Tornado value. Look how far that Inferno Dragon got dragged. Way back to the back, it ends up focusing on the Barbarians, which are just about going to take that tower anyway. Time is counting down. You know that it's just another log for the win. Lots of pressure, but there rolls the log and the good game, grabbing that last second 1-0 win. So this deck is versatile. It's shown that it's strong against all sorts of different cards, or you might argue just maybe players that aren't that great. This was an unusual deck that I faced right here. Check out this guy with the Elite Barbs, Goblin Barrel, and the Three Musketeers. And that risky move right off the bat, he's going to drop the Three Musketeers at the very back, that nine Elixir commitment right at the beginning, kind of similar to maybe somebody throwing nine Elixir worth of cards right at the river. But this guy went for all of them on one side, so no split to the Three Musketeers. So it kind of had me worried as the Goblin Barrel moves in. I see what he was trying here, but you'll see right here as the Three Musketeers get pushed back, the Barbarians melt. But between everything else that comes in, every Musketeer is out of there. And we're looking okay. We're a couple of Elixir behind. But we've got the Miner and the Ice Wizard already closing in on that tower. Works out like a pretty good pairing. The Ice Wizard and the Miner getting a few hundred hit points, about 600 or so, off that tower. The Fire Spirits again. Great value out of the Furnace. I do fear that it could see a little bit of a nerf just because it is so popular right now. And again, don't kill the Messenger. Don't blame me. I'm just saying that that's the way that balancing works. If you see a lot of one card, it's likely to get nerfed. If you almost never see another card, you might look for a buff from that same card. Now this guy is again trying this Three Musketeer Goblin Barrel combination. And again, it's not gonna work out for him. And check out the Tornado. Such great value right there, stalling those Musketeers while everything else just wipes them out. The Fire Spirits not quite getting the job done, but the tower is going to finish that last Musketeer off and we're almost into double elixir one more time. And you can see he's ready with the elite barbs. Now, this move right here rarely works simply because you waited so long for your opponent to build elixir that you're just not going to get those elite barbs to the tower. Easily, easily countered by the barbarians. The fire spirits are again going to do a great job of taking out the other units in the area. That is going to do it for the minion horde. Fire spirits by themselves, not usually a good thing. 
in comes the goblin barrel. I wasn't quite ready for that, but again, the furnace doing a good job of helping the counter and the ice wizard chipping away. We've got another minor combination as the minions arrive. Perfect timing, the minions get there. We grab a couple hundred more off that tower. Elite barbs on defense, so it's looking good at this point. We're gonna suck those barbs back. The fire spirits, perfect timing to deal with the goblin barrel. Double furnaces up, doing a great job there. Lots of splash damage moving in. Barbarians on the move. Miner arrives at the tower. Good use of the minion horde by my opponent right here. Is going to counter pretty much everything. But again, it's just about chip damage in this battle. And the support provided by these fire spirits is just amazing value. Taking out the minion horde again. Check out that tornado. Drags the barbs over, away from the tower, back over to the furnace. Another goblin barrel countered. And again, it's my turn. Back to the tower with the miner, a few other small units. The fire spirit's doing a great job wiping out the minions yet again. One fire spirit almost gets to the tower. More chip damage from the ice wizard and another set of elite barbarians. And look at them just get chewed up. Chewed up completely by four fire spirits. The barbs really healthy right here. This looks like a huge push. Barbarian, ice wizard, fire spirits, minions. The miner arrives at the same time. He's got minions all over the place. But once again, we're going to chip off that tower again with the Goblin Barrel. And one more time, the Fire Spirit's doing a great job dealing with the Goblin Barrel Goblins and any minions that are moving in. So this was a case of most of my cards were just perfect counters to what he had prepared. Lots of units closing in on the tower, and this time, taking the tower out, the log couldn't be the card to do it. I wanted that log to do it three times in a row, but it just didn't quite happen. All right, we're on a winning streak right now, you guys. So we go back into another challenge. This time we are facing somebody who's got a hog cycle style deck. And this is dangerous. This is a deck that has given me a lot of problems between the ice golem and the hog rider push. Very often can get around most counters and get to the tower. Again, though, I do have a lot of defensive structures because the furnace works great. And I have, of course, the inferno tower. Not the ideal trade against a hog rider, but for a player like me, I feel like sometimes I just need the crutch of the Inferno Tower. And by the way, don't listen to anybody that tells you this card or that card is just for terrible players. No, all cards are for all players. They're all fair. There's no card that's not fair. There's no card in this game. And I will argue this all day long. There is no such thing as a no skill auto win card in Clash Royale. Now, mind you, of course, there are several cards that are tough to keep from doing at least a little bit of damage to your tower. The Graveyard, of course, that's the one everybody's talking about right now, but also the Royal Giant, the Miner, they get right there, but you have to realize you can't think of it as much different than a Lightning Fireball or Rocket. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it's almost impossible to stop it from getting some damage on your tower, but personally, I still like cards like the Graveyard the Miner and the Royal Giant better than the Rocket, Fireball, and Lightning as far as doing direct damage to a tower. I would rather see a unit have to do it than just a stinking spell. So that's my opinion. You're welcome to argue with me down in the comments. Uh, I'm always open-minded. I have been swayed before. I've been wrong once or twice uh, in the past 60 seconds. Okay, so I constantly make mistakes, whatever. But that's part of the game is learning, trying to get better. Isn't that why we're here? At least part of the reason you're here to watch and try to get better. I mean, watching multiple battles is a good way to improve your skill, especially with a specific card. These pro players, these guys that are winning the tournaments and all these challenges, they have played enough that they know the specific counter, the skill, the strength, the weakness of each card, and they're using it to the best of its ability. And that's all that this game is about, getting value out of every drop of elixir that you're using. Now right here, this has been a pretty close battle. We've got that Inferno Tower down. Again, this guy doesn't have a big tank deck, so you're not seeing that great elixir trade in that we're spending five elixir against a four elixir hog rider, but it's still gonna help out a little bit. Here the hog comes across. You've got the uh, fireball down trying to take everything out. The ice golem not helping the hog in the way that most players want it to and that is that Ice Golem is going to get pushed by the Hog and get to the tower and then freeze, stall things out. If you try to defend with Skeletons, a Skeleton Army, of course they're going to get annihilated by the Ice Golem. Right here though, more chip damage. Again, it doesn't always have to be a big, beautiful push. His Hog Rider across the river probably didn't need to be countered by these barbs. 
just because of the hog riders placement it was going to get taken out by the towers and i could have used the barb somewhere else but now they're coming across the river along with a log ice wizard and of course the miner getting so close and sure enough the barbs get taken out before they ever get to the tower but at least they distract the other units in the area kind of chewing up time chewing up damage and damaging the ice golem so it's not going to get across and be able to work in concert with another hog rider yet more barbarians go down hog rider never gets to the tower but it's the miner and the log that get there once again the log man maybe i'm underrating my log seems to win almost every battle i have all right, you guys, that is going to wrap up this episode, but thank you so much for sticking around. I sincerely appreciate your time, and I got to tell you, the comments I am seeing lately here on YouTube are fantastic. Your guys' support is amazing, and I love you for it. Hashtag Galafam. See you tomorrow. Full attack.